All right. Welcome back to Believe You Are a Good Mom today. Our special guest is Stacey Saunders. So exciting. So, oh, go ahead. Oh, I just going to say hey. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Say hey. Please do. Okay. So Stacey is, um, I'll just let her introduce herself, actually. Go ahead. Well, I'm a certified life coach from the Life Coach School, and I coach people who have food sensitivities, moms who have food sensitivities, or kids with food sensitivities that have been recently diagnosed. So I've been through that whole journey myself. And now I help other moms go through all the overwhelm and stress and get to the place where they can really feel confident navigating all of that. Oh my gosh, that is so good. So look her up so that I don't get off on a tangent talking about that because that's not what we're talking about today. (laughs) But I help moms with kids that have type 1 diabetes, which um, sounds like we should be talking about that, but another day. Okay. So, cause I absolutely detest talking about food. I hate everything about food <laughs> and feeding kids. It's the worst. So we'll get into that later. We should definitely talk about that. Sometime. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. Today, what we're talking about is approving of yourself because can I just go on my soapbox for a second? And then I promise I'll let you talk. Okay. So, <laughs> um, my whole thesis, right, is to believe that you are a good mom. The way to be a good mom is to believe that you already are. You are a good mom, okay? And that means that you're not a good mom by earning it, by doing certain things, okay? When we say, what kind of mom do you want to be? People hear, what kind of mom do you want to (laughs) do? Like, what are the things, what are the foods that you're going to feed your kids and how and when and all the things? And that will qualify you as a quote unquote good mom. Like that's, like what we typically think that I want to change our mentality about this, flip it on its head. That's not at all what we're talking about. (laughs) So we're talking about believing that we are a good mom, which means that we approve of ourselves. And I'll let Stacey kind of explain this connection and I'll, yeah, let me just, are you ready? Cause yeah. So the reason why this is relevant in our conversation is I have just been going through a period where I've been kind of having some seasonal depression. And typically I'm a really upbeat, positive, energetic person and I have a lot of fun. And I usually approve of myself in a lot of areas. But in the last month, I've really been wrestling with this feeling of not approving of myself. I'm really critical and judgmental and I'm seeing all these reasons why I'm lacking, right? Because my actions are really different than they used to be because my kids have been sick, I've been sick and the sun is gone. And so I just have less motivation, less energy and um, don't do all the other things that I typically do. And so then, because my brain thinks that, Like, right, when you said, we think that being a good mom is really, like, doing all the things. And that's what my brain has been thinking. But I didn't realize that until I got coached (laughs) recently and realized that my biggest problem right now is not that my actions have changed. It's that I am not thinking that I don't approve of my actions anymore. I don't approve of myself anymore. And then... um then I keep creating more evidence of that by the things that I do, such as like, instead of going to bed, I stay up and watch like a lot of Hallmark Christmas movies. <laughs> and then I'm super tired the next day. And so then I don't, I homeschool. So then I don't plan school for my kids. And so then I show up and I'm trying to figure out what we're going to do. And then I get distracted. Right. And so I use all of those things as like, evidence that I am not worthy of approval because I'm not doing the things that are like me being the best me I can be. Yeah. Yeah. And so of course, when we're coaches and we're in the self-help world, we're all about be the best version of yourself, always improving. Mm-hmm. La, 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 la. And it's like, we just use that against ourselves because we're like, oh no, I'm not being the best version of myself. What? Who cares? Like you are being who you are being right now and you are good. Like when you believe in your inherent identity as a daughter of God, that he made you and he said, it's good. Like, it's very good. Like, that's just end of story. Like for me, like, that's all I got to know. And it just, I just, with this, because 
because we learned this when we're kids. You're a daughter of God. Like I am a child of God in primary. And then you're a daughter of heavenly parents who love you and you love that or whatever the new young women's theme is. Like I'm so old. I don't even know what the new one is, but, um, and I've been in relief society ever since I've been, like, I haven't been in young women's in a long time, but the point is that we learn it young, but we don't really believe it. Right. So, um, and maybe we did because we could keep it together back then. Like we earned our approval by being good, right? Just be good. Like I say this to my kids all the time. I just want them to be good, which means do good, like stop pitching a fit. <laughs> and oh, sorry. What am I forgetting is happening right now? Okay. And oh, sorry, you want to say something? Oh, well, I just love what you're saying about like how we believe it and then. I think sometimes the thing is I've realized I'm like, I've always believed that I was a daughter of God, but actually recently in April, I had this experience where it's kind of like looking at my brain and different sorts of things. And anyways, I just realized that I believed it, but I didn't know it. I didn't feel the power of it. And I had this experience where I did, I had this moment where I really felt it. And it was like, oh my gosh, all of these things that I do, those are not me. Those, those actions are not me. Like I'm separate from those. And I am a child of God. Like I'm a spirit with divine, with a divine nature. Like and that's it. Like end of line. And it's amazing because when you feel that you're like, oh my gosh, I could literally do anything. Like I am so powerful in this moment because I'm connected to my heavenly parents. Right. And who I really am. Yeah. And it, but, but we lose it. Like, right. Our brains get distracted because it's like, I had that knowing for like a while and it was really powerful, but then, you know, I go through a thing like, some mild depression and I lose sight of that of who I really am and and right then I don't approve of me and then I don't think God approves of me because how can he approve of me when I like don't even want to read my scriptures and it's like so hard to show up to teach my Sunday school class like I don't even feel like I can teach them because I'm just so disconnected Mm -hmm. um but the amazing thing has been is when I've sat down to study and when I quiet the voice in my head, that's like, oh, everything we're learning from the scriptures is about how, see, more evidence that we're not good enough. Mm -hmm. But if I can quiet that voice and think about, okay, like, what do I know is true? What do I know is true about God? And what I know is true is that he loves me so much. And that like, right, the things that came back to me in that moment when I was thinking was like that, I'm a beloved spirit daughter of heavenly parents. That's what's true. Like, and that he wants to help me and that he loves me and he understands that I have weakness. Like, yeah, that's part of being a human. Anyway, that's my soapbox. But but it was a powerful thing. I think a lot of times that there, I go through seasons where that critical voice in my head wins a lot of the conversations and there are some moments when I could just be like shh I hear you but we're going to focus on other things that we also know are true like I know that you think you're telling me the truth but let's look at what else is true (laughs) yeah 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 I love the discussion of voices in your head (laughs) because it used to sound so crazy and now I'm like oh once I actually like realize that I'm listening to them whether I acknowledge them or not you know and that they're affecting my life then I need to like you know, admit. Yeah. You know, it's like all of that brain chatter, all of that self-talk. And it's like, there's, it sounds like a lot of different things. And sometimes it's encouraging and other times it's like, what is wrong with you? Get your act together, woman. And then it's like, I'm just going to go lay in bed for the rest of the day. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's really an exercise in figuring out like where different thoughts are coming from and whether we want to listen to them and give them the power that they have automatically like as soon as you think something then you feel it and it drives your actions or your inactions and so the way that I found recently to find to hear him right that's what it's all about um to make sure that we're listening to like God's voice right um is in our breath Right. So I visualize like breathing in Christ, (laughs) like breathing in the truth. Like that is the oxygen mask we're supposed to put on our oxygen mask first, you know, which means like 
we need to be able to breathe. So we should be breathing first and then we can help all our other children stay alive and things. Um, so I breathe him in because that's what it feels like to me. It's like when I take an inhale, it's like, oh yeah, I'm alive <laughs> because it's like, it's like, I'm just exhaling all day long. Like I'm just doing it on my own. That's what the exhale feels like to me. Like I'm on my own and the, the space between the exhale and a new inhale is like, you're drowning. You're literally drowning because you're out of oxygen. And so I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like I'm filled again, you know? And so it's like, literally everybody is teaching this right now. Take a pause and breathe. Like you just breathe, like breathing is the first step to processing any emotion. Breathing is how you get connected to God. Breathing is how like even repentance means a change of breath, like change. Sorry, my computer's about to go. Even the computer needs a recharge. Come on. We need to recharge. And it's through our breath. Like that is what keeps us alive is breathing. And so, um, anyway, so after I've breathed, (laughs) got on a little tangent there about breathing, we're talking about voices, right? To make sure that we're hearing his voice, not our own. Uh oh. It what happened? Oh, it fr- I thought it froze. No, nope, okay. I'm just breathing. Yeah. Okay. We're all taking a pause. It didn't freeze. <laughs> Your podcast didn't stop working. We're just breathing. And then you ask him. That's what prayer is. So, like in your example in your story that you just told, it just reminded me that like if we're so like confused, just ask God, like literally my experience with prayer has been like, as soon as I open the conduit, I feel his love. And that's all I need. It's like, if it's on the go, if it's on the run, if it's my prayers aren't good enough because I have like five kids and I can't even hit my knees because they're all like, I got to go to the bathroom and they all need to go to the bathroom and all the things. It's like, If it's, even if it's on a run prayer, anytime I can like open that conduit to him, I feel his love. And that's what you were talking about is like, you don't need your own approval of yourself because you know that God approves of you, even if, and especially when, and always. And And I think yeah, that's something we have to remind ourselves in because like that is, I, I think, um, and I, I have to be clear, like I have never been diagnosed with depression. I have never had like clinical depression, but I know from my experiences with other people. And um, if you've ever read the book, Silent Souls Weeping by Jane Clayson Johnson, you need to read that book. It's so powerful. Um, It's about like the stigma of depression in the church and other stuff, but it's so good. But one of the things that's hard is when you're feeling depressed, it's actually really hard for you to feel the spirit. And so then that exaggerates your feelings of like worthlessness and like, and disconnection, right? Because it's like, I can't even feel the spirit. Like I can't feel that love and that connection that I normally feel. So it's obviously me, right? Something is wrong with me, but there's a really great analogy in that book. And it talks about how a house is always connected to power. Like the electricity is coming into the power, but depression is kind of like a circuit break where the power is still no, was that it? There's a, anyways, basically the power is still there. The spirit is still there. It hasn't left. You just can't feel it, but it's still there with you. But I think that is one of the hardest things about like feeling depressed or depression is like not accessing that feeling because when you don't feel that spirit, it's hard to believe that God loves you and is, approves of you. Yeah. But that's where I have to like remind myself. It's like, maybe I don't feel it now but I know that I have felt it and yeah. I know that it's true, right? we got to bring yeah. ourselves back to like, what do I know is true? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Is that like, why would he stop loving you in, right now? If you have felt that before, have you felt the, like I'm, I've got Alma five all jumbled in my head right now. Like if you felt it before, why would it not be true right now? Yeah. And that's where and our, we're our brain. brain- Uh (laughs) (laughs) that's where our brains get tricky because they're like Uh well because our value and our worth and our ability to approve of ourselves right we know we're good if we're doing all of these things and that's the lie yeah that we all believe (laughs) that is the lie exactly that's the lie and so our brain will feed us lies and we can listen to those lies or we can trust what we have felt and know that that was legit 
<laughs> like, and that right now we're just going through something and that that's fine too. Like the acceptance of whatever is happening right now and trust that, no, I know what I know because I felt it. What were you about to say? Yeah. Well, and I was just going to say, I think that's one of the things in the past few days of the question that I've been asking myself is like, okay, instead of doing these self-care things, like these minimum baseline things for me, which looks like, like sitting at my table with a, like a light and like journaling or reading a couple scripture verses or, you know, or when I'm driving, listening to a conference talk, um, or like going for a walk, moving my body, drinking a certain amount of water, right? Those minimum baseline things before like a week or two ago, I was doing them because I'm like, okay, well, like, what's the minimum? Like, at least I can do this much, you know, at least I don't turn on the TV until this time of the day, you know, so there's that I can approve of that, right? Mm -hmm. I was sort of doing them to be like, okay, well, if I keep doing these things, then I can still sort of approve of myself. But when I got coached about what Jody helped me see is that instead of doing those things to earn my own approval, I can do those little things as a gift for me mm -hmm. and do them to take care of me because I love me. Mm -hmm. This isn't about earning approval. And that's been such a huge shift for me. And so when I, so like yesterday I was driving in the car and I was like, okay, well, it's Sunday and driving the car. I usually listen to a podcast and I was listening to it and I was like, oh, I just don't really want to listen to this. You know, <laughs> like right? I was struggling. I wasn't feeling anything. And then I paused and I was like, wait a second. Am I doing this so I can be like, oh, check off. I listen to gospel related things on Sunday. You know, that's me being who I want to be. And I stopped and I said, okay, how is listening to this? a gift for me or what can I do that is a gift for me and a gift for heavenly father, right? What can I do that will actually connect me to him instead of like, I'm doing this because it's an obligation so I can approve of myself. Yeah. And so I thought about it for a minute and I realized I'm like, you know what? I'm going to listen to some spiritual music because music has a way of connecting with my soul when nothing else can. Mm -hmm. And so I turned on some music and I listened to these hymns and songs. And as I did, I had multiple, just very small impressions, right? Just little moments of truth that I was being taught mm -hmm. because I stopped. And instead of being like, you know, I was in autopilot approval mode and I stopped and I said, wait, how is this a gift for me? And it totally changed my morning. Yeah. So when we're doing things, whether it's checklist gospel things, you know, to try to get God's approval, or it's like checklist mom things to get who knows whose approval, your sister-in-law or something like who's, who made up these rules anyway? Like, why do we have to do all these things? As oh, Stacy homeschools and she like t feeds her kids healthy. So I better just start doing that. It's like, <laughs> I'm just like, laughing because Rosie's literally only been eating tater tots for like a week since she's been sick. She doesn't want to eat anything except tater tots. Yeah. So, and if that doesn't make you a bad mom, then what, you know? And so if we just drop the war on the long list of expectations we have that qualify us as a good mom, if we just know that we are good, God loves us. He approves of us no matter what. He knows what we're going through. He knows what he put us into. Like he knows this is all part of the plan and it's all working exactly how it's supposed to be. And it is just trust in that. Then what do we even want to do? Then we can open up our mind like you did in that example. I loved it. It's like, I just feel like I have to do this. Well, then knock it off. What do you want to do? Well, I want to listen to some music. And now we're back in alignment, right? So yeah. If you don't have to do anything to let yourself approve of yourself, if you just, it's just a given like, yes, I am valuable. My worth does not change by my to-do list getting checked off. It's just, I think that's, is. oh, keep uh -huh. finishing. No, go ahead. I think that's where our brains like freak out and where I watch my clients brains freak out. It's like, wait, but if I don't have to do this right to earn my approval, to think that I'm good, like maybe I'll just do anything or eat any, like, right. My thing is about food. It's like, well, if I don't 
have to avoid sugar, like, or right, it's like, I'm not like this other food is bad that I shouldn't be eating. Then what if I just go back to like eating all these things that I've learned all this stuff, I don't really want to eat anymore, right? Because we learn about the nutrition of foods, and then our brain freaks out. Um, but it is kind of funny. It's like, okay, wait, but if it doesn't matter what I feed my kids, and it doesn't matter what I do during the day, then like, maybe I'll just go crazy and do all this stuff that I know I don't really want to do. So what do you tell people when they say that? I was about to ask you that. What do you <laughs> tell people? Um, I well, I have to too. work on it with myself because sometimes I like freak out about it, but I realize I'm like, no, but that's when we focus on, well, what do we really want? Right. It's not like all of a sudden you have this freedom. So you're going to go crazy and stop being who you are. It's yeah. like, no, it's just like, okay, I can have this experience or I can choose this experience. Like, right, it's all on a spectrum. There is no hierarchy here of like better experiences or worse experiences or more valuable or less valuable. It's like, okay, which one do I want to have? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I want to have the experience of like eating all these things that maybe don't do the most for my body. And other times I want to have this experience of like, yeah, I'm going to eat this way because I know it fuels my body in this way. Like, it doesn't matter which one you choose. It's just which experience do you want to have today? Yeah. Yeah. And we, this is what the awareness of the model shows us. Right. And that's what we walk people through in coaching. Okay. You think that you're just gonna, whatever, if whatever, then let's put it in the model and see how it's working for you. Like we show them like <laughs> that this is how it's going for you. And what I'm proposing is that we put, I am a good mom in the thought line. How would you feel if you were thinking I, I am a good mom for me? Like I feel confident. And then from confidence, what am I going to be doing? I'm not going to be feeding my kids ramen every day for three meals a day. Like I was doing that when I made it mean I was a terrible mom that I was doing that. And then I was stuck in the cycle of still doing it. But when I believe that I'm a good mom, that like, but this is what I was thinking when you asked just now, try it. Like, don't take our word for it. Try it. Like I literally had to take and try it myself. Like I've been preaching this forever and you can hear on previous podcasts, how we talk about how I don't brush my kids hair. And it's like, I just, something's got to give. And I'm not picking that fight in the morning. I'm not going to wake up an extra half hour early to get through those knots. Like go to school. You don't care. Then I don't care. Whatever. If it doesn't mean that I'm a bad mom, that your hair is not brushed, then go. Cause I don't want to deal with this. But yesterday, and I just used this example. Sorry. If you're hearing, if you listen to every single podcast I produce, you're going to hear the story twice, but what the heck, especially as I look at you with your curled hair right now, it like reminds me that this actually works because when I was in the spin of I'm a bad mom because I'm not brushing their hair and I was trying to convince myself I'm still a good mom that's why I bring it up on every podcast because I'm trying to convince myself I'm still a good mom even though their hair isn't brushed all of a sudden like no like it finally clicked like I tried to believe this and I literally finally I know that I believe it because that action line finally changed like my girl's hair was clean and brushed and curled yesterday and we're talking, this is like, who is this mom? Like, it's a whole different mom going on here, but it's not, it's who I am. And I finally lived into who I always have been. And that doesn't mean it's always going to be the case. I mean, I didn't brush it this morning. One of them, she woke up early and was like, I want my hair curled again. I'm like, well, then get right up. Okay, here we go. Um, but the point is that it really does work, but you have to try it. You have to get that conversion for yourself. You have to do it in order to believe it which is a little bit mixed up in the model. But the point is they're like, <clears throat> I don't know what the point is. How about you go? <laughs> <laughs> well, the point is we have to, like, we just have to open up to believing that it could be true, right? That it's yeah. possible I can approve of myself, even though I'm not working on my business. I'm not planning my kids homeschool. I'm not doing all of the Christmas crafts that that a month ago I thought I wanted to do, right? I can approve of myself even though I'm not excited about Christmas when I thought I would be because I love Christmas. You know, it's like all of these things that are different than how I thought I'd be. And I just have to open up to being like, it's possible that I am still as worthy of approval as I was back then, because the truth is it was never my actions making yes. me worthy of approval anyways, yes. right? That's what we have to just, but you have to, like you said, you have to try, you have to be willing to question it and to wonder about it. And then 
you know, to give it a try. Yeah. So totally. So Stacy and I are in Jody Moore's coaching program together and I heard her get coached on this and I took some notes <laughs> on, um, because I was screaming, this is what I do. It's a group coaching program, but only one person comes on at a time. And so the rest of us are just kind of eavesdropping on the coaching session, you know? And so I'm in there like doing Lego with my daughter and like, I have it in my AirPod and, and then I start going, yes. Yes, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> and I start yelling at you, and my daughter's like, what is happening? Because <laughs> she can't hear it. You know, it's just in my ear. And um, anyway, so this is what Jody said that I'm like, this is what I'm talking about. Okay. Well, what was that? Um, so we don't do things in order to earn our own approval, right? That's what we've been talking about. It's not, I'm going to do that because I should, right? We have to catch our shoulds, our supposed tos. And it's not, oh, it's not. If I was a good person, then I would. Like you are a good person. Now, what do you want to do? That's all there is to it. Like approved, Stacey. Yeah, like you just are approved. And so now like go ahead and be free to not do the Christmas crafts or go ahead and do them. Now that you're approved and that weight is off, then what, it, like, yeah. Yeah, no, because it is like a weight. That's the thing is like, somehow we think not approving ourselves is going to give us the motivation to like change so we can approve of ourselves. But all that it does is like weigh us down and make it even harder to do those other things that we might genuinely want to do. Like I, you know, genuinely want to do some Christmas crafts and I genuinely want to like be excited about teaching Sunday school because those are typically things that I like, mm -hmm. but, but so that's the thing. Like when you said, it's like, Oh, if I just decide I approve of myself, then that weight is gone. And then I really am free to do whatever I want. And that might be to like do Christmas crafts. And it might be to be like, Hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to like read and read on the couch because that sounds amazing. That sounds <laughs> like a gift to me. You know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like yeah. No. So if you're still in the camp of like, no, if I just let myself off the hook, first of all, who wants to be on a hook? I am all about letting ourselves off the hook. You are, do not need to be on some hook, sister. <laughs> like, let yourself off the hook and try it. Once you're off the hook, just test it. Just test it. See what you do when you're off the hook. Because we're weighing ourselves down with this hook idea that's like... <laughs> We think that we have to be like tethered to something that's like keeping us like behaving correctly, but you don't like, I promise once you're free, like the, just the liberation feeling is like so good. So, and you've just got to experience it yourself to like be converted to this. And so test it out. Stacy's felt it. She's testifying. I've got a second approval here. We're all approved. And then the other thing is that if you're in that situation that Stacy described that it's like, I know I felt it before. I can't feel it now. Just don't let yourself use that as ammo to beat yourself up. Like there's nothing's gone wrong here. It's the messy middle that you're experiencing right now. Like you are a beautiful butterfly. You're in the cocoon right now. It feels like gooey mess because it is like, that's literally the plan of salvation <laughs> is that like, we were caterpillars. We were perfectly happy being happy little caterpillars. What's the problem? Weren't we cute and gushy and delicious probably, but according to Lion King, <laughs> but, um, but God knew like our potential, like who we are eternally. And we needed to have this messy middle mortal experience to become the butterfly that like, and, and so it's like a big picture metaphor, but it's also a little picture metaphor. It's like two weeks ago, you felt like a butterfly. And now it's like, why do I have to get back in the cocoon? Like I'm flying here, I guess. Like, but it's like, it's, it's cyclical. Like it's not a one and done. And so we have messy middles all over the place. And so do our kids and so do our husbands. And so does the neighbor and the bishop and everybody that we're judging just let it go. Like they don't need our approval. They're in their own messy middle. God approves of it all. It's all good. And anything else, Stacey, please interrupt. Yep. No, I love that. I think that's, it's so good. And it is like, um, it's okay to be a mess yeah. and we can just, I mean, I think that's the most powerful thing. And I think it's one of the, like the most worthwhile work that we'll ever do is learning to love 
all of us, like all of ourselves, like the messy part, the hard part, and like the amazing parts, right? And that that even when we're in this messy part, that we still are that person, yeah. you know, when we're the butterfly and we're flying, like we're still them and we're in the mess. And we when we can love and approve of all of it, that's like where all the power is going to come. Yeah. And it really is. so it's just, but it's work. It's work we got to do. Yeah. And it's never one and done. We literally, do. yes, yes, exactly. Because we want to, because the weight is lifted. <laughs> So the, that's, I mean, if you feel like you actually listen to these podcasts, thank you, first of all. And uh, if you're like, she's always handling the same old thing. Yes, I am. Because (laughs) it's the battery that's in the middle. Okay. So you have three AAA batteries and the first one is awareness. So once you actually even get awareness of the voices in your head or like what's happening for you, like a coach will get you awareness. Then it's the acceptance piece. Like it's this acceptance battery. It might run out really fast and you have to keep recharging it over and over and over. It's like everything we're talking about right here is the acceptance piece, but people just want to skip that battery and move on to alignment, which is like when your action line aligns with who you really are, you know? So when we're like, what kind of mom do you want to be? We hear what kind of mom do you want to do? That means in my action line, I'm being kind and patient. Well, I'm feeling patient and showing up kindly and, and doing all the things that like this perfect little mom would be doing. And we just want to focus on that part. But I promise that part, the alignment, it just comes naturally when we really recharge our acceptance battery. And so if it feels like I'm saying the same things over and over and I'm bringing on all these guests who agree with me and keep saying the same things I have is because that's the point that I really want to make is that like we have got to accept the messy middle in order to get aligned. And we just want to skip right to the aligned part because we feel so out of whack because we know who we are. Like, And so when we do things that are out of whack with who we really are, we feel that dissonance and that's the guilt, which is great. Like I love guilt because that means that it proves that I am good and I did something that's out of alignment, but I, I can't, it's just willpower. It's just forcing the action line. If I don't get like the acceptance of who I am and what's going on and all that goodness. So anyway, I love it. Thank you so much for having me on to talk about this, Emily. Yeah. You want to be done. I, do you Marco oh. Polo? Do you ever yes. use that Marco Polo app? So my friends all make fun of me because I say, okay, I'm going to hit stop now, but they can see the little red line is still going. They're like, she <laughs> didn't hit stop again. <laughs> that's what I do. So that's what I keep doing on podcasts too. Cause what's up? Anyway. I thought you were wrapping it all up so beautifully. I, I was like, we're finished. Look, she's polished <laughs> this whole thing. It's like in a beautiful bow. Yeah. And that's why people edit podcasts, but you know, not around here. Nope. <laughs> So Stacy, this is when we wrap up as I say, where can they find more of you? Oh, right. We want to tell them where they can find me. Okay. Well, yes. you can look me up on Instagram. It's at Stacy Saunders coaching S T A C Y. Um, and, or you can look up my website. It's called low babycom It's a Anyways, there's all sorts of stuff about food on there and um, food sensitivities and diets. And I actually have a little mini course about um, like str- like stress and the holidays for your first, like your first holidays with food sensitivities and how oh, to awesome. handle stress around that. And I'm telling you what, it is worth listening to because I have to listen to it myself. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, yes, this is good. I need to remember this when we're coming up to the holidays and you got to eat differently than other people. So So check it out. It'll be okay. We'll have all those links in the show notes too, so that you can just click a button to get to, to it. And I got to tell you, like I have friends speaking of Marco Polo. My friend just the other day was like, so I have this uh, amazing life coach friend who always says, blah, blah, blah. She like quotes me and I'm like, "Mm, I should listen to my own content. (laughs) So speaking of, I have to listen to it too, to remind, I, yeah, yeah. Because these beautiful brains that are doing just what they're supposed to, (laughs) it's good times. Even when you're a coach, you're still a human with a human brain. So get lots of good practice. For sure. All right. So Stacy, thank you. This was great. And um, remember everybody, you are a good mom. If you need help believing that, there'll be an outro. You can hear it, but I'll tell you right now. 
dropthewar.com forward slash believe, which I'm pretty sure that outro has the old domain on it. They both work. So, and they'll be in the show notes. Okay. I promise I'm hitting stop this time. <laughs> okay. Bye guys.